Hey guys and gals, Bob Sellers here, your host and resident singer fisherman. Thanks so much for tuning in again here on Hook, Line, and Singer. Got an exciting trip planned today. I've been doing a lot of crappie fishing, even uh, I've done some bluegill fishing and that sort of thing, but a lot, a lot of crappie fishing this spring. But today I get back to what is really kind of my true love when it comes to fishing. That is bass fishing. For me, the largemouth bass or the spotted bass that's all we have here i love those smallies too but i have to go a little bit further north to find them than where i live but quite honestly i love all kind of fishing but there's nothing quite like that powerful powerful tug of getting a big bass on the end of your line <laughs> they just pull and uh, i love it a big one especially but those little ones can give you a pretty fun ride themselves but who knows what if anything we'll get a hold of today going to a place uh, I fished a lot I've been up there a couple times this year and it's just not been good for me at all I've heard from two different people that were there this past Saturday and they caught 20s and 30s so that's fishing sometimes they bite sometimes they don't but as I always say you don't know until you go so here we go, let's go. In love forever, it turned out so right for strangers in the night. Do be do be do be 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 do ba do be do ba be do be do ba screw be do be do. A fish right here. Fish was on the bed. I can hold him. Don't you come off there? Let's net him. Good bass. Sure was on the bed. Oh my goodness, just barely hooked. Just barely hooked. Which is good, because he was hooked in the throat. Well, finally. All right, there he is, y'all. Let's let him go. Buddy, here we go. I see another fish on the bed. I believe it's a male patrolling these beds. It's hard to get them to bite. I don't think he's quite as big as that last one. I'd like to catch him. 
especially if that's going to be my only decent MO this day. All right, now go get it, buddy. You see that? No, you can't resist that. Come on. I even sprayed some anise oil on it. Trying to do everything I can to coax these bass to bite that are on these bed. I've thrown about everything I had at him. And I got that one to bite a wacky rigged stick worm. That was the only thing I got one to bite. I'm trying to get another to bite. I'm going to try to hit, I'm trying to hit him right on the nose. Right there. Right there. Ran from it. Oh, this wind is blowing 30 miles an hour out here. Definitely not helping. Helping at all. Fish is right there. Whoo! Thought he was coming after it. He thought about it. Changed his mind. There you are, buddy. Go and get it. Dropped it right on his noggin. Well, this is kind of like live scoping. You see him, just can't make him bite. <laughs> it's fun, though. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fool this one. There he is, I got him. I got him. I got him. <laughs> I did fool you, buddy. Got a worm. Come here, fella. Come here, fella. Got it. Bedding bass number two. They are definitely on bed. That makes bass really hard to catch. It sounds like a good thing, you know, you go brim fishing when they're on bed and anything you throw in there, a brim will just tear up. Bass aren't that way. Um, they're really hard to coax into a bite when they're on bed. But sometimes when you can see them like that and, uh, Throw enough stuff at them enough times, you can get one to bite. All right, fella. Thanks for playing. Go back and do your job. All right. Maybe we can find another one on bed. I see another one. Oh, 
Oh, that's a good cast. There's two over there. Come on. And one that looked interested in the jig just would not commit. This is just sight fishing right here, folks. Oh, I thought he was gonna get it. Hey, let me go back to the old wacky worm. It's just so hard to throw in this wind. But it's the only thing so far that they've hit. Cast. What was it? Oh, where did they go? There they are. Here we go, boys. Don't that make you mad? Get it. It's a big old snake looking worm in your bed. Are you gonna allow that? Surely not. Uh, he said, yeah, I think I will and don't call me Shirley. Gosh, that's right on it. Come on, guys. Oh, one hit it. One had it. That's what they'll do. They'll just pick it up and spit it out a lot of times. There's that good one right there. Come on, man. Come on. Come on, wind. It either blows me on it too close, blows me too far off of it. Well, this is challenging. All right, the wind has died a little. I'm still getting too close on them. Back end of the boat just blew right in on top of them nearly. I'd catch every one of these fish if it wasn't for this wind. That fish got it that time, but he didn't. I think I'm actually seeing these fish turn up on their side like and spray these beds. I don't know that I've ever seen that. I believe they are. Oh, one just picked it up. I missed him, y'all. Just picked it up a minute. Of course, I got tied in a big knot. I just cut my worm in half. That's not good. Let's try this again. <sighs> when the wind cooperates, it's fun. Oh. <sighs> Okay.
Okay, I see it. Went in the tree. It came out. It came out, dropped right in the bed. Missed one. Missed one. Y'all, I am determined. Well, that is the cast. That should be the cast. Keyword should. Should have been the cast. It wasn't. These aren't eating it. They're just they're just hitting at it and picking it up. That was the big one right there. Came and hit it. That is a nice bass right there. That may be the female. Right there, right there, right there. Come on. Nope. Just picked it up again. I'm gonna try setting my hook real hard. First time I feel anything, I can get it back in there. Got him! Good, he's hooked. I think he's hooked pretty good. Come here. Yes, yes, yes. <sighs> finally, finally. Y'all, I was after that fish. A long, long time. But he was worth it. Persistence paid off that time. All right, I'm gonna let this fish go right back over there. They're doing such a good job of patrolling that bed. See, that's a male, he's skinny because it's spawn right now. If this was a female, she'd be fat, fat, fat and full of eggs. But that's a nice bass. I'll take him. Thanks. Go do your job. <laughs> and that was the bigger of the two, which is extra awesome. The other one is still over there, wondering what in the world just happened. Where is my partner? That's a lot of fun. I, I wish, I wish this whole side of the lake was was full of bass like that that I could see. I'd probably sit here and jiggle this little wacky rigged KVD Strike King stick worm at them. That's the only thing they've been interested in today. It's always been good at this lake, and that's fun. <laughs> I hope how much fun this is is coming through in the video. I'm going to try another one. My setup for this wacky rig deal, you saw that hook. I believe that's a um, called an octopus hook, about a number two size. Not that big at all, but it's, it's kind of a stout hook. You see it's got a, it's not straight. I really like that hook. Seems to get uh, good, good hook set, good hook set ratio. This is a inexpensive Berkeley Walmart lightning rod. It is 
seven foot medium heavy, pretty stout rod. This is a Fluger Present XT. This is a size 30. 20, I think, is as small as they make. Then there's a 25, and then there's a 30. To me, unless you're getting into some much bigger fish uh, than bass, I think the 30 is just the perfect size. I think that's plenty big enough. This thing will, um, I've got it rigged up with 50 pound braid on here and a red Cajun line uh, leader. Probably need to retie that. Uh, I think that's 17 pound test. But that's all there is to it. This wacky rigging can be super, super effective sometimes. Uh, and as you've seen today, even on finicky fish. And I like it, I just like it better on a, on a spinning rig. Gives you a little bit more control to me. Because it's weightless. Those stick worms are heavily salted, so they got some weight to them in their self, plus the hook. So it casts pretty well. I see both of them again. <laughs> I bet I won't get that one to bite that worm again. But he's back over there patrolling, doing his job. And many things, uh-huh. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me, sucker. I'm not gonna be your sucker. All right, this is the perfect lineup right here. This is exactly the way I was a while ago. The wind didn't ruin my cast. Got it right in there, like that. Not that time. Let's try to go over here to the right. I don't see them right now. I saw him bite at it and missed it. Hit him with my line that time. <laughs> I'm gonna leave those two in peace. There's beds all through here. But I don't see fish on these. He's got his back to me right now. Try to throw it in front of him with the tree. And the wind's carrying me over there. Let's just try this one more time. Right there, right there. It's a perfect cast. It's gonna be a perfect trajectory. Bringing it right at his nose. It's laying on his back. The worm is laying on the fish's back. <laughs> no bueno. All right, I see you, buddy. Got another one. Got another one. Got to know. Stay on there, buddy. Yeah, work that drag. Oh, fighter. I got you. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's so much fun. Y'all, I can't believe it. Ooh, he was hooked good. 
little tough part of his lip. There he is. Yep. There's another one off the bed. <laughs> They're doing the job that God created them to out here today. Making little fry, little tiny bass. We'll come back and get after in another two or three years when they grow up. How awesome is that? Pretty bass. Come on, guy. I'll put you back. Here we go. <laughs> they are back on that bed, if you can believe that or not. <laughs> I bet he swam back over there and said, hey, that fella get you too? <laughs> I know there's no chance that I could catch one again, is there? Would I even try? <laughs> you know I will. This is the angle. There's the cast. <laughs> they got out of dodge. <laughs> they said not again today. Maybe, maybe tomorrow. But not again today. I think they decided their lips are sore enough. Oh my goodness, I see a big fish, y'all. I just saw a big fish. It's out here deeper to where I can't really see it. Except it turned up on its side. And it was a bass, too. Whew. Mercy, mercy. That would be a fish to weigh. Promise you. Wow. That thing's side looks about that thick. Ooh. Y'all better get ready because if I get a bite, I'm going to be beyond excited. My goodness gracious, that was a big fish. Of course, it gets bigger and bigger as my mind replays it. But I'm serious, that was a big fish. Well, yesterday we had homecoming at my home church, Faith Free Will Baptist in Carrollton, Alabama. It's always very special to be back and see uh, family that don't come that often and uh, just have a good time singing, uh, eating. <laughs> Heard some good preaching as well by Brother Jeff Elrod, who's serving as our pastor. It was from John chapter 11. And this is the shortest verse in the Bible it says, Jesus wept. Jesus's friend Lazarus had died. Verse 17 says, then when Jesus came, he found that he had laid, Lazarus had lain in the grave four days already. He'd been dead four days. And remember, y'all, this is not a fairy tale. This happened. Then Martha in verse 20, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Martha said unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Martha says, I know he'll rise on the uh, resurrection day. But Jesus said, no, in verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Martha said, she saith unto him, yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Verse 33 says, When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, 
come and see. And that verse 35 again says, Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, behold how he loved him. But I don't think Jesus wept because Lazarus was dead, even though he was his friend. I think Jesus wept because of either their grief or maybe the fact that they had to see this act in order to believe. In 38, it says, Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. In other words, didn't I tell you? Hadn't I told you already? See, I think that maybe is why Jesus wept. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. See, Jesus didn't have to say a thing, but he spoke audibly unto God so that those around could hear him and witness it. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And a lot of people believe right there, had Jesus not specified Lazarus, then that would have been the resurrection of all of the dead in Christ. But he's called out Lazarus by name specifically. and said, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto him, loose him and let him go. <laughs> that is a good reminder. Most people I know are waiting uh, on God to move in a situation of some sort in their life. It could be a financial situation, health situation, situation with your family, situation with your job, a uh, situation um, at home in church, you name it. But that scripture right there is a great reminder. As my friend Karen Peck sings that my buddy, uh, rest his soul, uh, he uh, died with COVID back in 2020, Aaron Wilburn. He was a funny, funny man, but he was also an incredible songwriter. He wrote that song that Karen Peck Gooch sings called Four Days Late. When he's four days late, y'all, he's still on time. He may have already answered your prayers and you just don't know it yet. I think I had a devotional on that in a previous video from the book of Daniel. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. He'll come through. Maybe not be in the way that we would have designed or desired or even in our timing, but his ways are perfect and his will is sovereign. That as Christians and children of his is what we have to accept. Hey, my coffee's still warm. <laughs> that was a quick little trip, but a fun trip. Now, the fish weren't exactly biting, but we made a few bite. We landed a few, got them in the boat. That was uh, always a good thing. And that was, uh, I guess, bedding bass, sight fishing 101. The bass on bed like that often are really, really hard to catch. They're, they're less interested in feeding uh, than they are in protecting their bed and, and doing what uh, God designed them to do to make more little fishies. And that's what they were doing today. And so we happened to uh, spot several of those on the bed. And after a lot and a lot of uh, casting and dropping that wacky rigged worm in there on top of them, in spite of the wind, <laughs> and, Boy, it was windy. It's always windy there, but today was extra, extra windy. My face, uh, I feel like I'm about, I'm about to color this shirt, aren't I? And this shirt's pretty bright. <laughs> but in spite of all that, we wound up tricking a few, and that's always fun, fun, fun. Hey, thanks as always for being here with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button to like it, and uh, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. I upload videos at least every Friday morning and sometimes sprinkle in some extra stuff here and there. You never know what I'm going to be doing. Fishing, hunting, cooking, camping, shooting, frolicking, you name it. Do all kinds of stuff here. And most importantly, we always uplift our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
I appreciate each and every one of you. We're growing. We're growing slowly but surely. And uh, I believe that God is going to bless this channel. And you're a big part of that. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Just remember, folks, wherever you are, God loves you. And so do I. And until next time, I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.